Hi there, friends. I'm Chief Meteorologist Jeff Hanowich. We're approaching uh, 10 o'clock here on this Tuesday evening. Hope everybody had a great day. You know, we started out the day with sunshine, then we ended the day with a little more cloud cover. Late in the day, we started to see maybe a couple of showers pushing in, and now we're starting to see uh, that coverage area of both rain and or snow showers getting just a little bit larger. You need to know that this clipper system that is impacting us tonight, not going to come through here with a lot of fanfare, meaning it does not have a whole lot of moisture with it. Here's a look at the current radar and you'll notice first and foremost that the precipitation is moving mainly to the east at about 20 to 30 miles per hour. Another thing to notice, look when Carroll County the precipitation started as snow as it moved from Grayson County into Carroll County. Notice the white has turned to green. Excuse me, this is an indicator that what we're seeing here is as the precipitation goes from the higher elevations into the lower elevations, we see the changeover from snow showers to rain showers, okay? So this storm system that is going to impact us tonight is certainly going to bring a little bit more in the way of some snow showers and even a light accumulation into the higher elevations. The lower elevations aren't going to see any sort of accumulation. They're just going to see some rain showers. So again, a rain snow mix in the forecast for us here tonight with the mountains, the higher elevations, having the best chance to see snow showers and hence having the best chance to see a light snowfall accumulation. Let's head on over into the NRV where we're seeing some snow showers right now in Bland and also into Giles, not to mention with and into the higher elevations of uh, Pulaski counties. You had a little further south along Highway 100, also along Interstate 77 going from Fort Chiswell down into Carroll County. Much of what we're seeing is in the form of rain showers. Now as we head further up to the north, Areas in and around Covington seeing rain showers, but you head outside the city limits a little bit where it's colder and that's where we see the transition back over to snow showers as you make your way closer to Bath County and in Bath County in Hot Springs right now you are indeed seeing some snow showers. Now as far as what we're looking at here on the regional view, this is a storm system that does not have again a ton of moisture with it. The part of the storm system that's going to be impacting us is right here and you'll notice it's not a whole lot, okay? But it's going to be enough tonight to bring us that chance for rain and snow showers, okay? I would say that most of us, the vast majority of us, are dry by the time the sun rises tomorrow morning. This is a fairly quick moving clipper system, and again, I stress to you, it does not have a ton of moisture in association with it. Future Tracker shows that at midnight, the zone that has the best chance for snow showers will be the NRV. You'll notice that precipitation becomes lighter and more sporadic as we head closer to 4 or 5 a.m. And then by the time we head, say, towards 7, 8 a.m., most, not all, but most of us are dry. Might be an isolated rain shower across south side, maybe a few leftover flurries and or very light snow showers into our westernmost counties. But again, that precipitation um, is not going to last very long tomorrow. As soon as the sun goes up, the precipitation chances go way down. And then by uh, Wednesday afternoon, we actually close out the day with a little more sunshine. So tomorrow, certainly going to see more clouds and sunshine. I don't expect us to see a whole lot more in the way of fresh precipitation falling from the sky tomorrow, but the clouds are going to be harder to break. I would say later in the day, we will start to see an increasing amount of sunshine. Clouds continue to break for us tomorrow night. And then by the time we look at Thursday, all of us are going to be drier with more sunshine to enjoy. As we track this clipper system here tonight, as far as snowfall accumulations are concerned, uh, the higher elevations could see an inch or less. OK, we're talking about elevations 2,000, 2,500 feet up. OK, so the higher you go up in elevation, the more snowfall you're going to see. And again, it's not going to be much. OK, uh, I will say that uh, Mount Rogers areas near White Top. Of course, that is the highest point here in the Commonwealth. That is where we could see, you know, two, three, maybe four, five inches of snow. That is not out of the realm of possibility for us in the highest elevations here in the Commonwealth, i.e. Western Grayson County to see, uh, you know, at least a couple of inches of snow. But again, that's for White Top and Mount Rogers. Uh, Mount Lake may see an inch or two of snow because it's so high up in, in Giles County. But the rest of Grayson County, the rest of Giles County, Anybody who sees a light snowfall accumulation going to see likely less than an inch of snow. OK, you head towards Roanoke Lynchburg South Side. It's all just going to be rain showers. You also need to know, though, that areas that do see that light snowfall accumulation tonight 
may have some tricky slick roads come tomorrow morning for a little while. So again, if you see a light accumulation tonight, do be careful traveling tomorrow morning as uh, the roads could be a little slick until we can get the warmth established here in our neck of the woods. And that shouldn't take too long to happen as we head into our Wednesday. Then we turn our attention to another storm system. This one, I've heard a lot of chatter about it. OK, now as far as what's going to happen, it's too early to tell you for sure. OK, there are several things we are watching with a storm system come very late Sunday, probably more like Monday. OK, we've got a low pressure system coming at us from the southwest. We've got high pressure building in to the north. The moisture source is this low pressure system that will likely tap into some Gulf moisture. The cold air would come in from this high pressure system to the north. The northern storm system will actually be pushing out to sea, allowing for this high pressure system to dock itself out over potentially New England. Several things we need to watch out for. Most computer models, I want to see if I actually put this in. OK, we're going to show you that here in a second. <laughs> As far as what this storm track means, we need this moisture to meet up with this high pressure system in some way, shape or form, i.e. we need the polar jet and the other jet stream to come together or at least get close enough together where we're going to see the possibility for some snow. If the two jets stay separated, we don't get much of anything. But if those two jets get really close together or potentially even merge, that's when we would see a much better chance for some snow here. I think probably on Monday. I think Monday is probably our best chance to see wintry weather if we get anything at all. But we need several things to happen. We need this low pressure system to interact with this cold air. Will that happen or will it not happen? Too early to tell. I can tell you as we move along that most of the computer models right now keep most of the moisture to the south of us. OK, so right now, most of the computer models don't want to have that high and low interacting with each other too much. OK, if that high and low pressure system interact with each other, then this precipitation blob moves to the north. And I will tell you, there have been several times in my in the 20 years that I've been here where four five, six days out, the computer models suppress the moisture to the south. Then by you know two, three days out, you start to see that moisture lift a little bit further to the north. If that happens, this go around, then our chance for snow increases. So I am not at all confident in telling you uh, what is going to happen on Monday, okay? Because there are a lot of variables we need to work out. Again, this is a storm system right here that you're looking at the moisture with it that has not even come on shore in the Pacific, okay? It's still, still way out in the Pacific Ocean, okay, has not made its way on land yet along the Pacific coastline. But there are several things that we need to watch out for. Will this moisture make it far enough to the north? And will the air be cold enough to change this moisture to snow? <laughs> I can tell you that the computer models that want to bring the precipitation in here, and there's only a couple, most keep the precipitation to the south, but the few that want to bring in the precipitation into our neck of the woods early next week, have it warm enough where it's mainly rain. OK, so we need that cold air to get a little bit further down to the south. What we need to have happen is for that low pressure system, this one right here to weaken. If we can get this low pressure system to weaken and if we can get this high pressure to strengthen, then the cold air will have more success in making it further down to the south, which would then allow this precipitation to potentially move a little bit more to the north for us to get snow. <laughs> Hope that makes sense. We need a lot to happen right now for us to get a big snow around here as we head into early next week. As of right now, most of the computer models and the two that I pay the most attention to have the moisture further down to the south towards the Carolinas. The European model brings that moisture a little bit closer to us than the GFS or American model does. But even the European model wants to keep a lot of that moisture to the south. But all it takes is for a little bit of this moisture to make it a little bit further to the north and have that cold air come in with a cold air wedge. And then we could be talking about a little bit of snow around here as we head into early next week. We'll have to see what happens. By the way, I'd be remiss, and I was supposed to say this at the start of uh, this appcast. We love to hear from you. If you have anything to say, you can type your comment either onto the YouTube page 
or you can type your comment or question onto uh, this um, on WSLS.com, on the article on WSLS.com. So there are two ways for you to communicate with Allie and I. Allie, of course, is uh, in my ear right now. I've got this little earpiece right here. <laughs> so she's able to talk to me uh, from the control room. Um, anything you have any questions or comments about, you can write on our YouTube page or on the article on WSLS.com. All right, so we've talked enough about early next week. Fact of the matter is right now we don't have a great deal of confidence in the forecast. If I was a betting man and I had to tell you what I think is going to happen right now, I would say early next week, regardless of the precipitation we see, isn't going to be a big deal. But that could very easily change. We could pick up on some light snow showers around here on Monday. We could pick up on some light rain showers here on Monday. But it looks to me like, for now at least, most of the moisture stays to the south with us being just a little bit too warm. Please stay tuned. That could change. All right. Temperatures stand right now for us. 28 in Hot Springs, 34 Withville, 42 Roanoke, 39 in Lynchburg, upper 30s and lower 40s right now across south side. We're going to have the jet stream lift to the north later this week. And what that means is warmer air is on its way. Yes, temperatures today cool. Temperatures tomorrow pretty cool. By Thursday and Friday, as that jet stream lifts to the north, we start to warm things up here. OK, we are looking at high temperatures well into the 50s, maybe even some areas approaching 60 here as we head into Thursday and Friday. So not as warm as we were last week when we were in the 70s in some of our backyards, but we're still going to be in the 50s to near 60, and that's not too shabby for this time of year. A good 10 degrees above average as we head later this week. And again, when we warm up on Thursday and Friday, we also stand to see a whole lot of sunshine at that point, too. So very nice days ahead for us here later this week to spend some time outside. As far as the winds are concerned, they're not going to play a huge role in our forecast here. I'm looking at sustained winds about four to nine miles per hour Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. Every now and again, we could have some gusts 10 to 20 miles per hour. So there might be a little bit of a breeze every now and again from Wednesday through Friday. But uh, again, I stress to you, the winds are not going to play an important role in our forecast. For tonight, some light rain and or snow showers are possible. It's going to be chilly overnight lows tonight, about 31 to 37. Most of us stay above freezing. For the day tomorrow, clouds will decrease late. OK, I think much of the day tomorrow is pretty cloudy. Late tomorrow, we'll start to see those clouds breaking up. Temperatures pretty close to average tomorrow, reaching the 40s for the most part. Highest elevations may stay in the 30s. The precipitation tonight again should end for the most part by daybreak tomorrow. Maybe just a couple of leftover rain and or snow showers after sunrise tomorrow. But those again, I stress are going to be few and far between Thursday, Friday, Saturday, all dry. Of course, Friday is also Groundhog Day. We, of course, can't wait to see what Puxatani Phil has to say about this winter here on Friday morning. Uh, Thursday, Friday and Saturday are all mainly sunny. Clouds will thicken on Sunday. Can't rule out a stray late day shower. Of course, we're watching Monday closely right now. We only have about a 20 to 30 percent chance of uh, any precipitation on there on on Monday. Uh, and again, right now, if we are to get precipitation, I think it would be a few rain and or snow showers. As of now, I don't think Monday is going to be a big deal. But again, there are variables that could change and change that forecast big time. So please stay tuned to your local weather authority. And then by Tuesday, we actually break out in a little more sunshine. Temperatures fall from the 50s on Thursday and Friday into the 40s as we head into early next week. Joining me is my good friend, Allie. Allie, has anybody commented or have any questions either on our YouTube page or on our uh, WSLS.com article? Fantastic. Friends, it is 1010. We'll be back here in about 50 minutes from now with our 11 o'clock newscast. We do hope to see you then, but uh, if we don't, I hope everybody has a great night and we'll see you again real soon for another face or for another appcast. <laughs>